the other stations are tuned in too. You are listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. And welcome back to the show. Of course, I'm your host, Mike David. And joining me today, please welcome my guest, Amy Satori. Amy, how are you today? <laughs> hey, Mike. I'm doing great. Thank you. That's great to hear. And uh, as always, why don't you start off with first putting out your contact info or whatever is the best way for my audience to reach out to you for after the show. Yeah, um, you would just go to www.amysatori.com, and that's spelled S as in Sam, A T as in Tom, O R I. Um, or you can go to Instagram and look up Amy Satori on there, and Amy is A M Y, A M Y as in yes. <laughs> and um, yeah. Either either of those two ways, or you could look up my name on YouTube, Amy Satori, and you'll find a little pink lotus flower, and that's me. I've got all kinds of, um, I have all kinds of playlists. I have a talks about life that are like these shorter videos that talk about like setting good, healthy boundaries, communication and relationships, being a good listener, um, things like that. I've got collective love readings that I do for for like um, true love type relationships. Then I also have a celebrity series for um, that kind of help up and coming famous people or people who are really coming into the limelight and really becoming successful at their careers, get kind of ready and acclimated for their own careers to really take off. Um, so check out my playlist if you want to do that. Excellent, excellent. And Amy, we're definitely glad to have you back with us. We're definitely Thanks. excited to get a little bit more information and insight from you. But for those who are maybe first time tuning into you or just may not be as familiar, if you don't mind, just kind of quickly going over what it is you do exactly and just a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of a mutt. Um, I'm an intuitive spiritual teacher, but that has been an accumulation over many years and in many different ways. <laughs> so it's kind of a mixing pot at this point in time. So I've studied Qigong, so I know and understand healing very well. I am a healer as well. Um, and I know that you can heal things, you need to heal things on an energetic level first. But any kind of physical ailment always stems from something emotional that's causing it. So if I scan, I can scan your energy field and detect things that are kind of blockages for you even financial stuff or jealousy or anger, um, control issues, things like that. So we could always do that. Um, I can also help you make any kind of major decisions in your life. I have a lot of students here in Boulder that come to me and they want guidance in terms of, you know, am I on the right path? Is this what I'm meant to be doing? Um, people who are at a job sometimes will do a job review with me because I can feel into their bosses and their work, and I could tell them how they could do it better or what their bosses think of them or how stable their job is or not. Um, for that matter, I can help people know, like, who their good friends are and who aren't. Um, I have a lot of, like, producers, directors, actors, singers, dancers, um, authors, all these people, even um, golfers and, and other athletes that will do sessions with me to find out how they could do better. Like, I took one golfer from one level in his, and he's a pro golfer, he went from one level and I think he went at like a level or two of pay. He's making like, um, you know, thousands of dollars more from the advice that I gave him. So um, basically wherever you're at, I help you problem solve by tapping into my guides and your guides. They kind of work together and they come to a consensus and tell me information, something that you need to know in order to break through something, in order to go forward with more confidence or freedom in your life. Um, I also have delta waves in my voice, so it's very soothing. And um, a lot of people listen to me to go to sleep <laughs> and to also raise their vibration. So anything that you watch of mine or anything that you listen to of mine is, that, is going to help you even if you don't do anything about it. Um, let me think what else. I can talk to animals. You know, I have... Uh, people who will call and they'll say, I have a complicated issue with my animal. I'm at the vet's office and 
we've narrowed it down to it could be about five things. I'll tell them, you know, I feel like an obstruction in their gut or I'll feel like this is what they're feeling right now and this is where they're feeling pain and this is what it feels like. I'll describe it to them to help them narrow it down so they don't spend money on all these different tests. They can just hone hone in on one test. I can tell, tell them if they have something like life-threatening and if they need to go to the emergency room right now or if it's just in their head or something energetic that they need to work on. You know, obviously... I'm not a doctor, nor do I claim to be. That's why I have my, I have, um, you know, I've got my disclaimer at the beginning of my podcast that I do. It's called The Satori Show. You guys might want to check that out as well. Um, but I have that disclaimer for a reason because I'm not claiming to be any kind of professional. This is for entertainment purposes only. But I do give you whatever I feel intuitively that you need to hear. So I just help people. They come to me for help in whatever they're facing. And and I hope that I have couples that even come through and want uh, a better sex life or want to spruce things up. And I actually kind of <laughs> kind of climb in bed with them and kind of check it out. And I see I can feel both their feelings and see feels insecure about things and like what they can do to communicate through that and stuff like that too. Or if you have a ch- <laughs> if you are thinking of having children, I could actually tap into. If you have children already, I can tap into what your children are feeling what they need from you, maybe what they're lacking, maybe what they feel insecure about or need help with. But I can also tap into unborn unborn children and tell you, you know, who I feel is coming into your life, male or female, what they're going to be like, what their favorite colors will be, what they'll really love. So you guys could decorate their rooms before they even get there. And it'll be totally resonating with them and everything. So I'm just a helper. (laughs) Excellent. Now, I just find it so interesting that, you're able to to use your gifts to, to cover so many different areas when it comes to helping people. You know, what was the moment where you realized, you know, what you have is a gift? And also, what was the moment when you said, you know, this is something I can make a career out of? Um, you know, I was in the corporate world. I'm glad you asked that because I was a community relations director and I was, like, in sales and marketing for so many years. And it was... It, you know, it was it was great. I was really good at it. I excelled at it, but it was also really stressful, and I was under somebody's thumb, and it was always, like, uncomfortable, you know, being in that type of environment just because you always have to play by somebody else's rules. So I always wanted something that I could do that was – that was something I could I could have a totally flexible schedule with and, and work remotely. So I kind of wanted – I always wanted something like this, but I didn't really actually think that – that this was for me. I would have laughed if you would have told me I'd be doing this for a living. I really doubted it all along. <laughs> but um, a friend of mine kind of, it was like life circumstances oftentimes kind of force us out of our comfort zone and forces us to do something that we wouldn't normally do. And I went through a divorce. And honestly, I was so abused, battered, and beat up from that divorce that I just couldn't hardly lift my head or my hand. I didn't even know how to think for myself because I'd been very controlled in that relationship. So I didn't, you know, I was just kind of kind of a lifeless little body. And I went to stay with a friend, and she just happened to be a naturopath. And she was like, why don't you, you know, I think you're really intuitive. And so she was like very slowly encouraged me to kind of talk about some of the Qigong work that I had already studied and done. And she said, hey, you're actually pretty good. So she just kind of built me up a little bit. And then she let me work on some of her clients. And she taught me reflexology. And I started doing some little bit of work on her clients. And the information that started pouring out to these clients was really incredible and was making them cry and get goosebumps and everything. She was like, Amy, you really got something here. Like, you should do something with this. And then um, somebody heard about me in Texas. Um, through through the grapevine, I guess, and they were opening a juice bar, but they had like a little practitioner room that they said, you know, you, you could come be here if you want to, and you could be a juicer part-time, and then you could also be a practitioner one of our days. And so I started that way, and then when I started getting all these incredible testimonials, I started boosting my confidence and feeling better. And then it's just like my skills just grew from there, my confidence grew from there, Um I started doing psychic fairs and stuff, and just all along the way were green lights. <laughs> there was, I was in a Bible Belt town. I was sure that I was going to get, you know, chastised or attacked, or none of that ever happened. And everybody was just like, you've got such a loving energy and such an accepting 
um, spirit that, you know, people feel like they can really trust me and confide in me. And they, when they come to see me, they just feel relief. They feel peace, you know. So it's just built from there. And then I started that YouTube channel, was doing tarot readings on there, and I have kind of built up a little bit of a following and some really beautiful fans. And it's just it's been a really beautiful unfolding. So basically I stepped into my authenticity. I mean, to really just put it simply, I just allowed myself to just be vulnerable and just totally be myself. And that's that's when I think things start really happening for you is when you're brave enough to to just be quirky and weird and and goofy and whatever you are, just be that and, and, you know, conquer any kind of fears that get in the way of that. Yeah, I I think that is so cool. And, and, you know, it is interesting that you bring that up. I think a lot of people have trouble with something like that. Uh, You know, as you said, you stepped into your authenticity. You weren't afraid. You built up the courage to, um, you know, be who you are today and I think a lot of people are, are into, in 2019, going into 2020, are a little bit afraid of, of some of the judgments out there and, and, yeah. and you know, some of the backlash that, that people might give them. Um, what are some things that, that people can do or for just your own experience, you know, how to overcome a, a fear like that and to maybe deal with maybe some backlash that you do get? Um, yeah, you really have to learn to have tunnel vision and just know who you are and don't let people rattle you. So I'm so glad that, yeah, that we've gone here with this because I, I really feel like 2020 is going to be, be a really big blossoming year for so many divine feminines. Um, and divine feminines, that's a whole other term we can explore, but because <laughs> that could be male or female, but basically... If you've been kind of cultivating a skill or a talent or you've just gotten brave enough to leave your job to go kind of tiptoe into your own venture, that's about to boom. It's about to boom soon. And you could even become like overnight sensations or something with this. And and if not, then it could be in your own way. Like a receptionist becomes like the owner or the manager. Or it's like whatever this is, wherever you are, you're going to be exalted up higher and given responsibility and all that. And you're right. With that comes a lot of, like, who do they think they are? You know, some some even some uh, celebrities are going to start dating some people who are more seen as normal, and that's going to be kind of a shocker. But it's like it's we're just becoming more and more authentic as a society, I believe. Um, it's like something's happening to where you're either becoming more and more skeptical and jaded or you're deciding to jump on the other side and go toward non-duality and you're becoming a more loving, unconditional person. So, yes, you're going to have that backlash. But um, what I do when I've had that kind of stuff is, number one, (laughs) I usually use it as a teaching lesson. (laughs) So I'll get on my channel and I'll say, this just happened to me, so here's how you handle it. So I use them as a teaching tool, whatever these things that happen are. Um, and or I ignore it because that which you put your attention on, you cultivate more of. So if you complain about it and you tell all your relatives, I can't believe that this happened and I can't believe somebody would be such a jerk and I can't believe, you know, if you start going off about it and telling everybody about it, more of that stuff is going to start happening for you. So if you can just be like, oh, well, they just don't know me and you shrug it off because you know who you are, then you're not going to have so much of that kind of stuff happening anymore. And then if you could if you could be like, ooh, great, this is going to be a great learning lesson for myself to give myself a challenge as to how I can handle that, and then I can help all these other people potentially on my platform, whatever the platform is, or I can put it into my art, I can make a, a thing about it, you know. Then if you can turn it into something positive, then when those things happen to you and you do get attacked, you're like, ooh, ooh, this is an opportunity. This is great. But basically it's not, it, you have to allow yourself to not be influenced by what anybody else thinks either positive or negative, because you could even get positive feedback, and then all of a sudden you're, like, following that person because they said something really nice about you. Oh, they believe in me. They, you know, and then you'll start believing anything they tell you when they're really just blowing smoke. So you really just have to be like, this is who I am. This is who I know that I am. People can say really great things or can say really bad things, but whatever it is, I'm going to take it with a grain of salt and choose to believe what I want to believe. You know, people could call you a liar. They could say that you're making stuff up or whatever. But if you know that you're not, then who gives a crap? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, 
believe what you want, but this is the truth of the matter. It's like why the truth never needs bending. Let's just put it that way. And uh, you, I, I you could definitely agree. Yeah. Now, now, Amy, do you think that you know what you just kind of said? Do you think that's the kind of the key to to kind of getting to the next level and and really you know accomplishing maybe some of your bigger goals is embracing that that true self and and you know having the resilience. To, to kind of combat, you know, the, the things in the world that are trying to de- derail you and, and, and try to get you off your path. Do you think that that is the major key to that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, um, I mean, I have that. I've, I just talked about it on one of, my, on one of my YouTube videos recently. Like somebody was just like, I don't think what you're thinking is going to happen is going to happen. And I was like, for one, that's not very nice. You know, why go around, you know, putting water over somebody's fire? That's just not a very nice thing to do. And people have their motives. You have to, like, think of that, too. People will say things because who are you to shine when they're not? You know, they'll get jealous or whatever. But, um, yeah, you just have to keep coming back to, like, I, I know my truth. You have to build your own intuition up to know what, you, you know, to be able to stand in your power and know what you're capable of and believe in yourself and keep coming back to that. And it's not even like it's like it's almost like you can look at it as like, wow, if I'm getting attacked, like this is a really great sign. I must be doing something really beautiful, you know. <laughs> Somebody's really threatened by this. So a lot of times too, um, for those of you with YouTube channels, if somebody starts acting like that, I don't even waste my time arguing with them. I never get in these debates. I just block them or get rid of them. And that way you're just kind of snipping and pruning the bad ones that fall. You know, you're just kind of like snipping the dead, you're deadheading, you're deadheading the flowers. Snip it. There's no reason to react to it if it's not even true. So just snip it and then you've got another another new subscriber now who's more like genuine because one will grow in its place or maybe ten will grow in its place. Eventually you've got your soul tribe and you've just had to get rid of the, you know, there's going to be trolls and stuff like that too. But you've just got to keep... Uh, snipping and pruning and then not letting it get to you. And I've had a lot of shit happen. <laughs> I have had a lot. I just did a video. If you want to if you want to look at the video, it says Amy shares her trauma or something like that. If you put in the word Amy and trauma, Amy Satori trauma, then you will hear a long list of all of the stuff that I've been through. There's been a lot that could have taken me down. And I just knew that Either I can go down and I can be more and more of a victim and feel more and more sorry for myself and just completely, and I've done it, I've been there, gotten totally depressed, crying all the time, feeling like the world was against me and being scared to death of what this world was coming to and being in total survival mode. i got to stockpile my food and, oh, my God, this world's crashing down and I don't, you know, all that stuff. I've been there. <laughs> and then I realized, well, maybe if I change the way I look at things and I start seeing Think, think more positive. Uh, there's people out there that I could tell are happy. Like, how the hell are they doing this? So I started like really studying and being op- more open-minded about what they were saying. I was like, affirmations, like that's just a bunch of hogwash. I was totally like so skeptical of that whole thing. But then I started thinking, if you say affirmations and you really mean it, maybe that would make a difference. So I started kind of experimenting with different things. And I will tell you, if you really believe in affirmation, you speak it into being from a place of like being in the, like putting yourself two to five years out into the future and speaking from that place, like I am so happy that I've created the most incredible life I could have ever imagined. My income is so much bigger than I could have ever thought. I don't even know what to do with all this money. I can't believe the incredible man that I have in my life. He is such an incredible example to everybody that we know. He is just a stand-up guy. I never could have thought I could have somebody like that. Like, think of the things that you would be saying to yourself out of, out of a place of gratitude a few years down the road, and you're going to attract that. And I've just seen that happen in my life like tremendously. So I really believe in affirmations now. You've really got to believe it. And you've got to speak it from, from the future. Or as if it's happening already or has happened already. Well said, well said. Now, of course, um, uh, there seems to be a trend, you know, going into a new year, wanting to be serious about making some changes on, on in your attitude towards certain things and breaking maybe some of the bad habits that you, you seem that, that are just not serving you. Um, what advice can you give to people 
for them to pursue some of these changes and also to kind of help them stick with it and, and maybe not go back to their old ways. Wow. Oh. I I just so funny. I just did a talk about this this morning. That's coming out on Friday, I think Thursday or Friday. <laughs> um, it's basically you know the old is familiar, but once you've made these these once you've had these epiphanies and had these awarenesses of what you're capable of, you get these little glimpses that the universe will give you, and it's like it's like the universe will make you more and more uncomfortable with that old life until you it like pushes you off that cliff. And either you're going to go off that cliff screaming and flailing around with your mind filled with all of these terrifying thoughts and then you splat on the ground. Or as you're falling and screaming and flailing, it occurs to you, maybe I should just be present in the moment for just a moment and think this through. I have a couple seconds before before I splat. And then you could stop and you could go, oh, that's right. I might have a, you know, I might have a shoe attached to me. Let, Let me look around. Oh, yeah, there's a little cord. Maybe if I pull that, boom, you're saved. But you have to be really present in the moment and out of your thoughts and worries and insecurities. So the key is really kind of being able to kind of live in the world in a, from a split perspective of where half of you is observing what's going on in your body. The, the actual animation that's making or the, the feeling and the energy that's making your body animated itself, the energy in your body, if you concentrate on being present in your body and just quieting your mind even through meditation. Um, You can walk around and maybe listen to sounds instead of being in your head, like listen to the sounds in your environment like a a noise meditation or sound meditation. If you have your uh, energy split between what's actually what you're seeing and doing in the physical world and then being also halfway in with your your presence, it's really going to bring, it's going to calm your mind and it's going to help you see more clearly that you've got that that you've got that parachute attached. You're going to hear the guidance from the other side much more clearly if your mind is completely clear. <coughs> and you will have symptoms, just like you'll have the trolls and the and the naysayers and all that kind of stuff. The other side is going to try to drag you down because how dare you go out and sparkle and shine? Because it's going to raise the vibration for the planet. The dark side wants you to take you know wants you to go down with them. So they'll do anything they can to try to get you not to believe in yourself. And who better than somebody from your past to rear its ugly head and say, no, no, you're comfortable over here fighting all the time and having all these great arguments and all the stuff that's familiar, all the stuff that's comfortable. But like I said, you'll have, you'll have been given all these little epiphanies as you've gone along that just you, that you get to a point where there's a point of no return and you can't settle for that anymore. You might go back to it temporarily and just be like, what the hell was I thinking? This is so uncomfortable. Like this person that I'm with, they don't even want to grow. They don't even want to have any kind of epiphanies. And I've already grown a little bit. So it's like you just get so uncomfortable and life just kind of pushes you. It just pushes you into it. And the more you resist it, the more miserable and depressed you're going to be in the life that you're in. You really have no choice. (laughs) I mean, if you're meant for something big, you're going to keep getting pushed until, you know, until you do it. Part of what you came here to sign up to do, I mean, we do have our free will. We can always choose to go do that. But ultimately, you know, once the, it's like once you fall in love, you can't get that person out of your mind. You can try to run and hide from it, but even if you go marry somebody else who's wrong for you and you settle for somebody, you're still going to think about that person and, and they're still going to inspire you to grow to, into being a better person all the time. And then finally, when you're done with that other marriage that you settled for and you kind of grow into your power more, guess who you're going to gravitate toward? You're going to go grab that person that you, that you actually loved in the first place. Excellent words of advice there. And for those who are out there that want to learn more about you and follow what you're doing, where is it that people can go? Um, well, first of all, I would suggest going to YouTube and just putting my name in, Amy Satori, S-A-T-O-R-I. Look for the Pink Lotus. Uh, browse through my playlist. I even have, like, talks ab- about me and my personal life if you want to look that up, if you want to just learn more about me. Or you can go to amysatori.com and go to the About page, and you can read about, about me there. Um, or you can go to my services page to find out all the different types of readings I do. I do remote readings all over the world. 
So it doesn't matter where you are. We could get on Skype or we could get on the phone. It gets recorded, and then you get to keep it afterwards and listen to it. Um, so, yeah, those are some avenues. And Instagram is fun. If you join me on Instagram, that's much more interactive. And, um, you know, there's I do, like, these little random readings for you guys to encourage you. Anything inspirational or synchronistic that happens to me, I share it on there. You get to be more a part of my personal life. You'll see some of the some of the hobbies and interests I have and stuff like that. So um, it's kind of like a little encouraging community on the Instagram. It's like a warm, loving feel on there. So you might want to join me there. Sounds good. Well, Amy, once again, thank you so much for taking the time out to share your insight and knowledge with us. We really do appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you guys for listening. Hope you guys will connect with me. Absolutely. Thanks again, and we definitely look forward to next time. And for everyone else out there, please stay tuned. We're going to be right back.